Taro, welcome to the sh- the sea shed. <laughs> the sea sea shed on the sea floor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we just got done with a, an amazing weekend of hanging out with really smart yep. real estate investors here in Maui. That's why you're in my sea shed. Uh, and I wanted to take this time just to pull you in and ask you some questions uh, specifically about Burr investing. You know, buy, rehab, rent, refinance, repeat, because that's something you do a lot in your business. So before yes. we jump into it, though. Who are you? What do you do? Where do you live? Why do you do it? Go. You have 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Go. All right. Tarl Yarber with Fixated Real Estate. I'm in Seattle, Washington. Uh, right now, we do a whole bunch of burr investing, buy it, rehab, and rent it, refinance, repeat uh, with single family homes. Most of my career, we've done single family fix and flip. Uh, did a, done a little over 600 properties in since 2011. Uh, and as of now, we're more living a fun lifestyle and living passively on a lot of our investments. And we decided that our biggest mistake was flipping all those houses and not keeping them. So uh, now we're focused on burying as much as possible. Okay. Uh, so let's walk through. Actually, before we go there, let's let's dive into what burr is. In case somebody's watching this video, never heard burr before. What is burr investing? So burr investing is basically a house, in my opinion, it's just a house flip, yep. except you keep it instead of sell it. Yep. So you find a crappy house, you fix it up, uh, and you rehab it as much as possible to build that value into it. So like, let's say you buy a property for hundred grand, you put $50,000 into it, maybe it's worth 200,000 now in some capacity. Uh, but then when you, instead of selling it, cause that would be a good flip, you keep it and you refinance it and make it a stable property and then you rent it out as a tenant. So basically it's just that you're a landlord, but you just built the equity and value into the property. And if you did it right, you get all your money back out of it. Uh, and it's much better rental than just putting 20% down on a property and hoping to be getting an 8% uh, return on your money. There you go. All yeah. right. And of course, Bigger Pockets has a book on Burr Investing. It's called Buy, Rehab, Rent, Refinance, Repeat. You can get it at biggerpockets.com slash Burr book uh, and or the biggerpockets.com slash store. But anyway, let's move on from uh, what Burr is to talk about some of the problems, the mistakes, the things that really hold people back uh, when they're doing Burr, the mistakes that people make. So uh, you got a couple of mine or something? Oh, yeah. Over? So, uh, I mean, like, it's everybody thinks Burr is easy. Burr, Burr technically is easy. It's, like I said earlier, it's just a flip that you keep. Yeah. Uh, but there's some major problems with it if you make some mistakes on it early on. And one of the very first things is that most people, when they're comparing a property, so comparable, uh, they're trying to find out what the after repair value is on a house uh, and figure out what it's going to be worth after they're done fixing it up. Most of us are going to go into that neighborhood and we're going to comp the house on other flips because we're looking at uh, a crappy house that we buy and we want to be able to get the highest value that we can out of it. So we look at the other high value properties in that neighborhood. Then we buy it and we say, okay, cool. This house is going to be worth 200 grand if I fix it up. Uh, but then the biggest mistake you can make then is go, wait, this is a rental though. So I'm going to do lower grade finishes, right? Yeah. So now, because it's a rent ready property, yeah. then when you go to refinance it and you get your appraisal, uh, you comp the house at a finished uh, fix and flip level property, but you put rental grade finishes into it that didn't really work out as a comp and you get a low appraisal and you're not able to get your money back. Yeah. Now, unless your property show, unless you're comping your properties correctly, make sure whatever value that you're looking for, uh, for your after repair value is actually comparable to the finishes that you're putting into the house. And why is that so important? I mean, why does the comp thing matter? If you, if you comp to the wrong property, what does that do? Uh, what it does is that when you go to try to get your money back out of the property after the appraisal, uh, you're going to get a low appraisal. And so if you thought it's going to be worth 200 and it comes back at 180, uh, now all of a sudden that 20 grand that you thought you're going to get out of the property, you're not going to get out of it and it's going to have to stay there. And it might not be a good deal anymore because now you have to leave twenty, thirty thousand dollars into the house uh, when you're expecting to leave zero dollars into the house. So would you advise then that people should improve the the finishes they put in their property or just get the lower AR and just like comp to the right kind of you know, always comps. comp just like comp yeah. to whatever you need it to be at. And so yeah. it doesn't, because the worst thing you do on a comp too, is that if you overdo your house, right, which means that you might've been, which is another problem yeah. with Burr is that you might've gone over budget. So just because a house, yeah. maybe you're, maybe you're, um, uh, comparable, comparable houses and stuff around the neighborhood have Formica countertops and you yeah. go like, Oh, I'm going to make my house worth more cause I'm putting mm-hmm. granite yeah. into it. But if every house in the neighborhood is just a Formica countertop, why do you need to put granite into it? It might help it rent faster, but it's probably not going to get you a higher value, yeah. uh, in that particular neighborhood, but it might also put you over budget, which is another big mistake that people do in burr investing. Uh, cause if you had a budget of, of 15 grand on your house and you end up going to 25 grand in that, now you have another $10,000 you have to leave into the property, yeah. uh, potentially depending on what your appraisal comes back at. All right. So if, if the first thing we talked about was you're missing your ARV, the after repair value, the second thing is people just go over budget. Uh, what's like a third thing? So a third thing, uh, 
honestly, what it comes back to is that are you financeable individually or not? Right. When you go to get a refinance on a property, um, are you bankable? So if you are just starting out in real estate investing, uh, you just quit your job, you're going full time, uh, you have no income coming in your life whatsoever, your credit sucks, uh, and you just, you're just you not gonna be able to get a loan. So when you, you might be able to get a hard money loan pretty easily from a lender to be able to purchase the house and, and rehab it, uh, but when you go to stabilize the property on the refi part, which is one of the most important parts of the burst strategy is the refi, uh, and you can't get qualified for a traditional mortgage or even a portfolio loan or anything like that because your finances aren't put together. Yep. And I've seen this in fi people that fix and flip a lot. Uh, they just go and fix and flip, fix and flip, flip, fix and flip, and they'll go figure out their finances later. And then all of a sudden they go to get a normal refi and they can't because they don't have great tax returns. Their PL sucks. Uh, none of the records are really put well put together. Uh, so if you're, if you have a W2 job now and you're bankable, you might want to consider keeping that W2 job for a little bit so that you can actually do the refis at the back end of the property and not sit there having to sell the house that you wanted to keep. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. So the ARV, you get it wrong. Yep. So we're, we're going to get the ARV right. We're, we're, we're set on that. Okay. So yep. we got the, we comping right. Uh, we're also going to make sure we're on budget. We're going to get uh, bids from contractors, make sure that we uh, know what we're doing. When we go into it. We're not going to over improve the property. Uh, and then third, we are going to make sure we're bankable. Uh, one thing I like to do before I go into a bird deal is I like to like, especially early on, I wanted to make sure that I was gonna be able to get that refinance. So I'd go into the bank ahead of time and be like, hey, here's my plan. I wanna come back in six months and refinance. Can you yeah. tell me what you're looking at? Uh, anything else? No, and that's the easiest thing that you can go do right off the bat is go get pre-approved before pre you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, easy. So just make sure. Uh, the other th aspect is that, like, make sure this is this is an investment property, and investing is just math, right? So yeah. another mistake people make is they do their math wrong. Uh, how do you actually evaluate the property? How do you have a P and L sheet that you can use? Like, we use an Excel file that's so simple. Yeah. Uh, we just plug in the purchase price, the rehab, uh, and what we guess the ARV to be based on comps, uh, and then put our holding cost in there and a couple other things, a little calculator on that we can use to do that. There's other calculators that you can use out there that are way better than ours. <laughs> and can you talk about that for a second? You know, I could. <laughs> We've got some calculators on bigger pockets. Yeah. Uh, bigger pockets.com slash calc c a l c mm -hmm. we have an actual calculator for burr investing helps you plug in like what are you going to buy it for what are you going to rehab it for what do you think the arv is going to be and then like what does your return lo look like before like while you're like what kind of what kind of what's going on during the rehab part what's going on during the initial rental part mm -hmm. before you refinance it and then what goes on after the refi so you can kind of see the three different stages Plus, you can add like photos and there's a map and yep. it's just the PDF reports you can show your lenders. So Yeah, and, and to be honest, my very first Burr rental we ever did, I used the bigger pockets Burr calculator yes. to figure out if I needed it or not because I only had a flip calculator that I used, yeah. which is our Excel sheet that we just like just pounded and just yep. went through it. Uh, and I'm like, man, I don't even know how to calculate if the rental is good or not right now. So I went on the BP and figured that out, used that, and actually helped me make the decision to realize I should actually keep this house instead of sell it. And that was like the catalyst that started me on Burr investing yeah. more than anything. So... That's right. uh, I take it you created that entire Burr calculator yourself? All by myself. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> we got some amazing developers and an awesome team at BP. So, all right, so we got all that good stuff. Any other final mistakes or things that people do incorrectly when they're trying to do a Burr deal? I'd say the final last one is just like make sure Burr's right for you. Uh, and it's my, it might not be the right situation or the right strategy for the right moment in your career, right? If you're sitting there, if liquidity is a challenge, like cash, like you need cash, uh, you're not going to make a lot of cash for investing, right? So uh, I know that was my big issues for rentals for a while uh, was I'm like, okay, I can either flip this house right now and make 60 grand because in Seattle, Washington, that you can do that pretty easily, uh, make 60 grand flipping it, or I can make, I don't make 60 grand. Instead, I make $250 a month. Yeah. on the property. That was a really hard thing for me yeah. for a long time to look at the math there. Now, since then, I've realized that, you know, it's kind of silly because that 60K that is still in the property. It just becomes a bank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have a fly attacking you. Fly, right? uh, uh, it just, it's basically just like, it's gaining interest. You're getting 250 a month on it. That 60, your equity in that 60K is like sitting in the house and you're like, you're earning interest on that equity still. Uh, but if you need that cash, uh, then you have to sell the property. It might be the best, the best uh, course of action for you to be able to do that. Uh, the other thing that might not be right for you is that maybe you don't want to be a landlord, right? Maybe yeah, you don't yeah. want to deal with any of that kind of stuff. Maybe you just need to sell it. I know for me per personally, I would have never done 
for investing if I didn't figure out the property management side. And by figuring out, I mean somebody else figuring out the yeah. property management side. Well, so. you don't want midnight phone calls? No, I don't want it at all. So we got that taken care of. And actually, my wife runs that whole part. And I have, she, I'm like, oh, yeah, we don't have very have any issues with our rental. She's like, how the hell do you know? Right? Yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, I don't. That's the best part. Yeah. I have no clue. I don't know who anybody is that rents our houses yep. uh, or their issues with them. So, but make sure it's right for you. I can tell you a quick story. Um, when uh, we were really flipping a lot of houses, uh, and this is just a couple of years ago, we had a lot of overhead, we had a lot of staff, we've since then scaled back because we wanted to scale back uh, to have a better lifestyle. Um, we had, it, it was just a, it was probably my most upsetting moment in my career was we, I had a great property that I wanted to burn. However, at that moment, we were cash poor because we had so much money out in deals and we still had overhead that we had to pay uh, salaries and so forth for people to have. So I had to take this house and the timing was just at a situation to where I'm like, okay, I have to sell this house so that we can take the 70K uh, net profit out of that to then feed the machine that we had going on versus financially, for me long term, dramatically better, dramatically better to be able to have kept that house and not actually had had to sell it. I was so upset. And that's what actually was another catalyst to make me realize that like, okay, well, um, you still need to make cash to be yeah. able to burn invest and still do things. But uh, just make sure it's right for you before you jump headfirst into it. Yeah, that self-awareness is so key. Yeah. Like just, you know, we just came from this little mastermind and we talked a lot about that there about like somebody else's flipping a hundred homes yep. and somebody else is you're like, Oh, that sounds cool. Well, is that right for you? Or yeah. somebody else is buying um, apartment complexes or a mobile home park mm -hmm. or flipping, you know, whatever, uh, wholesaling, but like you got to figure out what works for you. It works for your uh, temperament, for your skills, for your future, like what that vision is. Yep. Uh, and you got to get just there. be able to pay your bills. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> like you, you can go get, <laughs> if you get 10 burrs, right? Sure. Cool. That's 20. Yeah, let's say each one's getting two fifty a month. That's $2,500 a month. Right. Yeah. But then, can you live on that if you're married? Do you have kids? Like maybe you could, uh, and but then can you have any you know any other thing going on in your life? You need to actually have cash still coming in. So it's just a, I think Burr's strategy is a uh, it's a tactic. It's like a, it's a tool on your tool belt to be able to invest, uh, and it's a great one to be able to. And I'm very happy that we're doing it right now. So yeah. Yeah. very cool.